Hashtag Ask Larry. I've been watching Twitter and there are not very many questions for Larry, so if you all could, you know, get on that. But also pay attention to my talk, which is going to start in two minutes. Uh, have you a Twitter account, which is a nice thing? Well, then you should talk to somebody who lives in this century, Yuri. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, you set it up, I knock it down. That's just how it works. <laughs> There's seats down front if people want to not stand the entire talk. If you do want to stand the entire talk, that's good. It's not going to be that long of a talk. I'd also like to apologize to anybody that I have inadvertently earwormed with this intro graphic. I promise you this is the last Partridge Family related content in the talk. If you were here for Partridge Family content, yeah, that guy's leaving. He's like, screw this. Hey, John, why you live in the current century? <laughs> I didn't understand that. <laughs> Sir, this is an Arby's. Oh wait, that's a Twitter thing. Sorry, you're not gonna understand that. <laughs> I I believe, sir, that it's actually traditional for you to sit in the third row. Second row. Second, second row. row is it the second row? Second row. There's a seat. I'm just waiting for the 19 to turn. Oh, there it goes. So, welcome to Come On Get Happy. Hi, I'm John. Hi, I go by Gene Hack most places on the internet, um, including Twitter. So if you're going to tweet about this talk, go ahead and tag me in, please. It's on every slide for your convenience. Let's start with a short audience survey. Who uses Git? So that's pretty much the room. Who doesn't use Git? That might be easier. No hands have gone up for the home audience. Who identifies as a Git expert? Few hands go up. No questions from anybody who raised their hands. <laughs> anybody in the room suffer from Git anxiety? Many people have raised their hands. I define Git anxiety as the persistent nagging feeling anytime you're using <laughs> Git, that you're gonna make a simple mistake that leads to breaking everything and being really embarrassed and maybe even having to ask one of those people who just raised their hands about being a Git expert for help, and then they're gonna come over to you like that guy in that video Randall showed yesterday and just grab your keyboard and angrily type something while saying this. Git gets easier once you get the basic idea that branches are homeomorphic endofunctors, manfunct submanifolds, a Hamilton space, of course. So, Hilton. Oh, sorry. Um, so, one more time. Who suffers from Git anxiety? Many, many people. In my experience, far too many people treat Git like this, like a black box. So this is an XKCD. It says, this is Git. It tracks collaborative work on projects through a beautiful distributed graph theory tree model. And the woman programmer says, cool, how do we use it? No idea. Just memorize these shell commands and type them to sync up. If you get errors, save your work elsewhere, delete the project, and download a fresh copy. <laughs> People have memorized a few basic commands and they know how to do the common things that they need to do most days to get through their job, but they don't actually understand what those commands are doing. At this point, Git is far too important for most development workflows for folks to treat it like this. Now we can argue about whether or not things should be like this, they shouldn't, but fixing that is out of scope. This is a 20 minute talk. We're dealing with what is, and for better or worse, you're better off understanding Git more deeply than just having like an index card with how to make a commit written on it. Particularly if you're working with branches or remotes or collaborating with other people via Git at all, which you almost certainly are. You need to be thinking about things in terms of the commit graph. Not graph like this. When people talk about the Git commit graph, they're using graph in the mathematical sense. Mathematicians, because they have to be fancy, call this a plot. <laughs> graph like this. 
specifically Git stores things in the form of what's called a directed acyclic graph, or DAG. Anybody present who wants to be pre uh, pedantic about the following explanation, save it for afterwards. Um, graphs consist of nodes and edges that connect the nodes. An edge typically will connect two nodes. In a directed graph, these edges have a direction. They have a little arrow on them. So they indicate a flow from one node to another. The acyclic part means that if you follow a path starting at one node through the graph, you won't ever end up in an infinite loop. You won't ever end up repeating yourself. You're always going to be able to get from one, node, one edge to the, to the other edge of the graph. Git commit graphs don't look like this. They look more like this. So this is what a typical commit graph for a Git flow style project might look like. You've got a master branch that's had some hotfixes. You've got a development branch that's kind of tracking ongoing work. And you've got a feature branch branched off of the development branch. So when you're making commit, instead of thinking about, oh, I type git commit dash m in a message, think about it in terms of adding a new node to the commit graph that's connected to the parent commit via a new edge. And when you merge, Think in terms of that merge commit as being a new node that's connected to two parents via two new edges. And one way to learn how to do this and pick up the habit of doing this is to look at the git commit graph and then do something and then look at the graph again and see how it's changed. So how do you do that? How do you visualize git commit graphs? One option is this program called git k that dates from the dawn of time. Um, it's written in this thing called tk that you may have never heard of. Um, it may be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get going, but it produces a, a visual representation of the commit graph that looks like this. Anybody use Git K still? A few people throwing hands up. Another option is SourceTree. This is a GUI uh, Git client that's available for free. It's distributed by Atlassian. Um, they require that you register with them in order to use it, either via your work using Bitbucket or you having an account in Bitbucket Cloud, but it will also produce a nice uh, GUI representation of the commit graph. Anybody use source tree? Few people. Um, there's a lot of GUI Git clients, and I try to avoid recommending them because I don't use any of them. Uh, my preference is good old Git log. I mostly interact with Git from the command line, sometimes on remote servers, so I need a CLI solution, and Git log works. You can make Git log produce something like this, which is actually the same graph as here same repository, basically the same section. And you can see it looks roughly the same, but individual commits are connected uh, to each other. The way you get that output from git log is you say git log dash dash graph, this is what makes it draw the, the stuff down the left hand margin, dash dash abbreviate commit makes it use short little six or seven character SHAs instead of the full ugly SHA, and then the formatting here with the colors and everything and where the stuff is, there's a, a string in here that's way long and it's really ugly and it looks like shell escapes barfed all over your terminal. Um, anybody else use git log like this? Many people. Okay. I have this alias to git lg in my config. It's probably one of my most frequently used commands because I'm constantly like looking at the commit graph and going, okay, I need to merge this. What's that going to do? You can see the full invocation uh, for this command in my git config repo at github gene hack git config, including all of the line noise in the format string. I will post these slides online and tweet it out on the conference hashtag at some point, um, so don't worry about it, or you can come up to me and I will you know, tell you where all this stuff is. So alias, wait, what? Git allows you to define aliases that you can then invoke via Git. Anybody use Git aliases? Many people. Cool. So for those of you who don't know, aliases live in a file called .git config. The .git config file lives in your home directory. It's an INI format file because Linus's taste is questionable. Um, <laughs> You have a section called alias, and then you can define things and map them to commands. So I can't ever remember whether cherry pick has a hyphen in it or not. So I just have an alias that eliminates the ambiguity. Um, I like my commit command to be verbose, and I don't like to type out commit, so I just type git ci and it gives me verbose commit. You can actually define aliases that run shell commands for you, 
And the way you do that is by putting a bang at the beginning of the command. If you want it to take additional commands, you have to do it, and I'm sorry, if you don't understand what I'm about to say, I'll explain later, this is ugly as hell. But basically you define a shell function that you then immediately invoke. So we're defining a function here called f that is going to run git br dash, it's gonna delete a, the, you're gonna give it a branch name, it's gonna delete that branch, and then it's gonna delete that branch on the remote, and we're gonna invoke that function. I call that nuke. Um, so git aliases. It's a great way to save complicated things that you do too often, but not too often to easily recall them, and you're tired of just hitting up arrow in your shell. One fairly annoying limitation of this is that you can't re-alias things to the names of built-in commands. So you can't just say, I always wanna do dash dash graph with git log. Git will ignore this. This is annoying. There are workarounds. Again, it's only a 20 minute talk. I'm not gonna talk about them. While I'm talking about the git config file, who has struggled with maintaining the correct email usage in your git config, in your git repos across work and open source? Um, there's a thing that nobody talks about ever called include if that's a directive that you can use in your git config files that's been in git since 2.13. Um, you use it like this. So you say include if, and then any git project underneath the project directory will include this additional config in it. So you can split, you can have, you know, if you've got your work and open source stuff split into different directory trees, you can include different fragment files and set a different email address without having to set that individually in every repo, which is a giant pain in the ass. All right, so once you started to think about operations in your Git repositories in terms of the commit graph, the next thing to do is to learn rebase. The best way to do this is to either sit down and just read the man page for Git rebase. It's actually pretty clear and well written. Or, you know, the next time I offer the class on it, take the class. You missed your chance. Um, learn plain Git rebase first and then learn interactive rebase later. You are gonna make mistakes. When you make a mistake, never, ever, ever delete the messed up repository. Rename the messed up repository. I use, like to use a dot eft uh, prefix to disambiguate this. Um, a real boss level move, if you know what this means, is to add that eft up repository as a remote to the clean thing that you check out. Um, once you have one messed up repository, you're in a perfect frame of mind to learn git reflog. Who knows what reflog is? Okay, many people, wow. Um, reflog shows all the commits in the repository even if they've somehow been disconnected from the commit graph. This is my dog, Sammy. Sammy suffers from an unfortunate condition called resting stone face. Um, <laughs> what reflog allows you to do is pretty much anything you've ever committed, even if you think you've lost it, you can get it back, at least up until a point. So real quick example. We have this uh, directory structure. We've got a feature for Ansh CBA, and your boss comes over and says, hey, that, that B commit, it needs to go. It's no good. Get it out of there. Rebase it out of the way. So you rebase to drop the B commit, and you end up with this repo graph structure. B's gone. Your boss comes back and is like, what happened to B? And you're like, boss, I deleted it. And they were, he said, no, I wanted you to delete G. So you need to get B back. You can find B in the ref log, and you do this by just running git ref log, and it'll show you like every commit you've ever made. Page through that, find the one that says B, note the SHA, cherry pick the commit back into the graph using that SHA, boom, now B's back. It's not in the right order. Rebasing it back into the original commit order is left as an exercise for the attendees. But that's how you fix uh, dropping a commit. <laughs> In summary, think about your get operations in terms of what you're doing to the commit graph. Like, strive for that. That will, is the best way to understand what's actually going on. Alias things to make your life easier. Learn rebase, learn reflog, don't panic. Pretty much any mistake you make that you've, that you've committed is fixable via a combination of the reflog and a clean checkout. Finally, if you're the get expert in your office or project, I know I've been making fun of you guys all along, but it's not intentional. Wait, it, it, it's not malicious. Um, 
if you're the Git expert, if you're the person that people come to you for help, when people come to you for help, don't sigh, don't be grumpy at them, don't grab their keyboard and type a bunch of stuff. Sit down with them, walk them through visualizing the commit graph, explain how to fix the problem, and let them type out the solution. Thanks. Uh, thanks to all of you for coming. Thanks to the organizers for accepting the talk. Thanks to my employer for paying to send me here to give it to you. We are looking to hire a senior QA and a front-end developer. We don't have job ads up yet, but hit me up. I'm here for another day or so. Um, and I'd be happy to take questions if I have any time left. <laughs>